I forgot to. <laughs> but I already know what I want to do next week, and I'm excited about it. I'm not oh, telling you yet. That's awesome. And I even told you about my background, so you have to figure it out. Um, oh, yeah. Hey, everybody. Uh, welcome to Alex and Jim Analyze Billy Joel Lyrics, episode five. What? We made it to five episodes. We were in syndication. Yeah, that's right. And we're five. making so much money now. <laughs> and uh, man, there are a lot of songs to go. There it's, are oh, impressive. It's going to be a while before we have to dig into the hassles. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> A friend of mine today, we, I was talking about the show and uh, we were having sushi. Uh, he's a, he's from Long Island, my buddy okay. from Long Island. So I'll tell you for sure, he's a Billy Joel fan. Uh, I don't think he'd be allowed home if he wasn't. Uh, but uh, we were no. talking, he says, are, have, are you doing Piano Man soon? I'm like, no, no, that's, that's later. Yeah, that's fourth, fifth season of this show we do. Piano <laughs> seasons <laughs> <laughs> yeah piano man is is we're gonna wait you save that yeah you save that he saves that yeah exactly play it first yeah that that the nerve of doing that first how dare you <laughs> yeah no 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 um so one of the things i said in picking the song last week uh so this is off of so we're this week we're doing Tell her about it off yep. of Billy Joel's An Innocent Man, which is his his biggest contribution to say the 80s. It's a very right, it's yes. a very 80s album. It's uh, <laughs> in a sense, in the sense that it's a very 50s album. Right. And everything in the 80s was about the 50s. A lot of it. And what I said last week is I said. One of the things I like about Billy Joel is that in the 80s, he didn't get overcome with 80s garbage, like you mentioned, synthesizers and right. whatever other thing. But then it occurred to me, thinking about it, there is one very 80s way that this album uh, was helped along. And that is this album was definitely a great album for the MTV video era. Oh, yes. The videos, to me, yeah. sell the premise of this album, help a lot. Yes, for sure. Yeah, they were all, I mean, especially the video for this song. Yes. Very much like, this is the era we're evoking. <laughs> With yes. uh, great clarity. And I think it helps so much because one of the problems with uh, any song that's made to sound like another era, but in particularly the 50s, because people seem to want to do that a lot, is it never quite does. Because the 50s was its own thing. The way you recorded an album was different. That's half the problem. That's half the problem. Half the problem is you were recording in mono and you're not going to do that now. And if you're going to fake it, it still sounds fake. Right. right. And like the worst is Eddie and the Cruisers, if you remember Eddie and the oh, Cruisers. God, yeah, <laughs> yes. uh, the worst. That bit of lunacy. Yep. That's yeah, no, you can't nail it. No. That, by the way, Eddie and the Cruisers was where I developed a theory of mine, which is if you do <laughs> a movie wherein a character oh. sings the best song or the most popular song or the song of a generation just never let us hear what you wrote don't just let us know it exists you writing it movie guy you're not gonna nail that song oh yeah no no it's i can't it we were just talking about before we came on the air <laughs> we were just talking about that thing you do yes that great movie that might be the only song that was like believably a hit in the era it was supposed to be. Yeah, they nailed it. And one of the magic things about that movie is they don't tell you it's the greatest song ever. They just tell you it's a big hit right then. Yes, and they just let audiences react to it. And um, it, yeah, there's not a whole lot of buildup where yeah. they then 
fail a, a real C plus song. Yeah. And then yeah. You're like mystify is this audience stupid maybe <laughs> right yeah no it's a, they did it right uh that, and no <laughs> nobody else has no the most egregious is it maybe i'm i don't know if i'm using the word right but it don't matter too much it feels uh, right yeah the most egregious example to me is the amazing song from the hit band in howard the duck <laughs> <laughs> howard the it's, duck where the world went crazy for this song the world loved this song and oh and all the song is alex is howard the duck that's the fucking song the nation went crazy for <laughs> there are a lot of believability problems with that movie aside from the song but yeah uh i felt that way about uh star is born yeah the most recent version oh this is the the big collaboration between the hip rock star and the weird folk guy. Yep. The road, the rose got closer. And then they faked me out because then it became a big hit anyway in real life. So I was like, all right. I guess this is a thing. Oh yeah. I don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> so uh, as I said, I picked this song. So let me just start by talking about the video. You just watched the video today or you watched it a couple of days ago? Just watched it a couple of hours ago and uh had obviously had not seen it in 30 years or whatever yeah uh, it, remembered every move from it because it was mtv and you saw the same videos 8 15 30 times a day yeah what's like, your favorite oh, where he turns around and then the saxophone guy is going to do that and you really just all those videos are like frame by frame stored somewhere yeah what my favorite part i love that rodney dangerfield appears Yes. In the video. And I love that Rodney Dangerfield's part is echoing something that legendarily happened to, I believe it was a comedy duo, a man and a lady who had to follow the Beatles. Oh, was it Nichols and May or something? I think so. Yeah. It's a, uh, and I'm not even, I'm not even sure if it's true. I just know that it's an off told story that Whoever had to follow the Beatles on Ed Sullivan were just, in, uh, it what was not you know? good. Yeah. <laughs> it was not a good day for them because the kids yeah. had no interest in whatever dumb thing they had to do. I had to one time do uh, an improv show on New Year's Eve in Venice <laughs> Beach. Uh, we did 15 minute sets between bands. Oh. And uh, that is a not a good feeling. <laughs> yeah. I've opened it's for dangerous. Bands. Yeah, I've opened for bands, and I remember opening for Frankie Valley in the Four Seasons. Uh, in oh. the, and I was a very young man opening for Frankie Valley in the Four Seasons, and the the way that grandmothers heckle you is different. <laughs> <laughs> That's it brings us full circle because, as you know, when Billy Joel recorded this album. He said he was, wanted to sound like Frankie Valley in the Four Seasons. And he does uh, a damn good job. He does a damn good job on some songs. Not all the songs yeah. are, you know, it's an, a little bit of a mishmash. Some yeah. of it's not very 50s at all. But yeah, and the, the general thrust. Say it again. I'm sorry, the general thrust of it is very 50s, but then there's a couple of songs where, like, oh, this is just <laughs> a song he had laying around. Yeah, this is, let's. I gotta finish this album. Yeah. yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. Put this in. The the doo wops okay. Like um, you know, the different doo wop songs are okay. They're not quite as good as real doo wop, but how could it be? Inevitably. Yeah, because um, you know, whenever like, you know, the whenever some like some ladies try to recreate the Andrews sisters, it's always problematic because. Yeah. <laughs> they, they were great and they were also they also existed in a studio system that allowed them to rehearse non-stop because they were indentured <laughs> servants right right you so, just can't get the hours in yeah yeah because nowadays uh those kind of hours are illegal yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and they call it progress yeah that's right <laughs> <laughs> uh, but uh so yeah we start out with a pretty great impression of uh of uh, what the hell is his name uh 
Ed Sullivan. We got our Ed Sullivan guy. Uh, we were talking about that before. Uh, that Ed Sullivan. Uh, lots of makeup on that guy to look a little bit like uh, Ed Sullivan's corpse. <laughs> for yeah, I don't know who that's for. The MTV audience, I guess. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's it's even that album. Who's that for? It's for Billy, which is it's good. What, yeah. I, yeah, they a little bit all are. There's he's never it never feels like he's fulfilling an order of yeah. any kind. It's just like oh, this is what I feel like this year. Yeah, and again, that's to be enjoyed in an artist that he's not. Oh, this is the songs I feel I have to do. It's just nah. Here you go. Here's my fifties album. Yeah, and even in this, I mean, you figure still rock and roll to me is his. I don't like what you guys are doing still. Like he's always was that. Yeah. I don't want to don't step of the your, way. Yeah. I don't want to wear your dumb clothes and I don't want to do your dumb thing. I want to drink a little too much and have a pretty wife. That's what I, I want. I feel like he hated making videos, probably. Yeah. <laughs> do you think he hated it? I think he hated it. Yeah. Yeah. That'd be my guess. Yeah. He did a lot of. Um, it's kind of a safe guess with anything because he seems to hate a lot of stuff. <laughs> yeah. Do you remember the video for Second Wind? Oh, God. Was that one of the trench coat videos? <laughs> was one yeah. Of... He's kind of a ghost in that one. Yeah. And he had like fingerless gloves or something. <laughs> yeah. And he's playing uh, Piano Man on the harmonica and he appears right. out of nowhere. Kid's about to jump off a bridge or something. Yes. Kid's yeah. going to jump off a bridge and he shows him a bunch of stuff uh, <laughs> yeah. some wh whenever we do talk about that song i will tell you in pure sincerity that, that song's ridiculous and it's been yes. helpful for me personally okay <laughs> it, it's it's both ludicrous but also in a way not because there's been times when i was a little depressed and the lyrics are helpful they were helpful for me so there you sure. go. Yeah. yeah, it's you know, it's positive. It's not the freshest thought, <laughs> but it's yeah. you know, nicely delivered. Yes, and um, uh, and it is, and at that point in your life, if you need to hear that, you don't necessarily need originality. You just need to. Yeah. Hear <laughs> you're not grading the writing. <laughs> yeah, you're not like, well, I would stick around, but uh, right, but that's a slant rhyme. Boring. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Well, All right. good. I'm glad you stuck around. <laughs> Me too. I am glad to. I am glad to. Uh, you know, sometimes. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> I know. So let's talk about the opening of it musically. Musically, it's different. There's not a lot of piano in this song. Yeah, that's true. It's a, it's it's very, a lot yeah. of horns. A lot of horns. Um, I'm, I'm trying to think if that was ever a thing before this album. Not a lot. No. I guess I 52nd Street is pretty horny. Yeah. As it were. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, which we'll get to another time. 52nd Street is just like a, the year he decided that he wanted to do jazz instead. Yeah. <laughs> and right. But yeah, a lot of horns in the opening. Very orchestral, like uh, big band-ish almost. Yeah. Um, and a lot of horns in the video, which I'm sure is, you know, a director's dream. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. It definitely cool stuff to cut two guys turning right and left. That's perfect. Uh, oh, yeah, and, yeah. And then before we even get to lyrics, uh, big old high voice belting. Uh, I, I like that. I think it brings you right into the song pretty quick. I think he pulls it off. Yeah, it feels like uh, pushing the edge of the his register for sure. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the album is like, this will be too high for me in five years. So yeah. maybe I'll do it now. Uh, yeah. But yeah, and if you're going after Frankie Valley, you gotta you gotta get up there. Yeah, I think it definitely got some Frankie Valley. It also feels like um, it's w like one of those trying to think of a good example of one of those crooners who would do stuff 
like, like a solo crooner too, who would hit those big notes like Jackie Wilson. It's got a little Jackie uh, Wilson to me. Uh huh. You know, yeah. uh, it's definitely influenced by those kinds of things in the nicest way. It feels like he's cribbing in a very nice way from, right. from greats. And knowingly doing it, like he's not like trying to trick you. He's like, hey, I really liked Frankie Valley. I liked Jackie Wilson because who the hell didn't like Jackie Wilson? Right. Uh, any of our listeners, by the way, who if you love Billy Joel, take take a minute and listen to some Jackie Wilson. That guy was great. Yeah, take a break. Yeah, come on. Everybody, <laughs> let's get him listen to us. Um, I was noticing we were listening to the song earlier, and uh, it's very funny because he does always go after a style. Um, like I'm going to be the '50s guy, or I'm going to do a jazz album, um, and then there's always a bridge or a verse or something in the middle of it where it's just a Billy Joel song again. <laughs> <laughs> it really makes me laugh every time. <laughs> That's it's right. Like, it's the '50s, and I'm crooning along, and it's in this song too. Lyrically, you'll find it. It's yeah. all very uplifting, and tell her about it. And then there's like a break in the middle where it's like. Because here's, here's what's wrong with everything. Here's what could go wrong, and it probably won't work out. Anyway, back to the 50s song. Yes. <laughs> so uh, here, I'll tell you what. I'll jump, I'll jump in on the first verse, and then uh, you take it from the second. All right. Uh, We're not singing it. No, we are not. I always like to double check. No, I, I don't think it, that. I, no one wants that. <laughs> no one wants this. <laughs> you're not wrong uh so listen boy i don't want to see you let a good thing slip away you know i don't like watching anybody make the same mistakes i made uh pretty cut and dried and he's we're immediately our narrator is immediately um bothering someone who may or may not be <laughs> making the same mistakes yeah Immediately giving advice to somebody who didn't ask him anything. Yeah. Um, but it is a turn. What year did this come out? 83? Yeah, that sounds right. He's in his late 30s or something. Um, it is like the first time, I think, that he's taking on this. Uh, every album before that, he's like the kid who uh, doesn't want your rules and fuck you guys and I'll, I'll do it my way. And this is kind of the first album where he's like, I'm old now. Here's what I learned. Uh, and I'm going to tell younger people what to do. Oh, it's that's like, a good observation. Yeah, that's true. Like the first like big brother or, uh, you know, dad times. Yeah. And by this point, he's already been divorced once or twice at this point. He's married to Christy Brinkley. Was that his second wife? I think so. Okay. Yeah. Divorced his first wife around Piano Man times and then like maybe just enjoyed himself on the road. I don't know. I don't want to get too into it. Um, but yeah, he had just married Christy Brinkley and made this album, which I think is why he was a little feeling upbeat. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And all of a sudden like giving advice. Yeah. Because, uh, you know, you get a, a hot model girlfriend and like, oh, I figured it out. I'm going to tell everybody how to do this. Here's what you got to do. Tell her about it. Right. I hit on Christy Brinkley and it worked. Yeah, I told her. So, that, um, clearly, I know what I'm doing and I'm going to give everyone advice now. He said to Christy Brinkley, yes, I'm short, but let me explain this. You know. I'm mostly sitting anyway. <laughs> <laughs> on a big fat so wall all in town. Yeah. With a, a wallet that uh, expands and contracts, I should say. <laughs> <laughs> Depending on who's involved. Yeah. All right. Uh, so, uh, and I don't like watching anybody make the same mistakes I made. I, you know what? I, All joking aside, that's a very nice thing to tell somebody to say, listen, I, uh, I've been stupid. You don't necessarily have to be stupid yourself here's what I did. Right. That's something. I will say that I often love watching people make the same mistakes I made. <laughs> but we're a little we're different that way. It's, it's reassuring that you aren't the only idiot making stupid mistakes. 
And then you get to watch the fallout because you know exactly how it goes. So I don't always hate it. Yeah, you know, my, my example of that is sometimes somebody else in comedy, there'll be a new comedian who says they're something they want to do. And I know that it doesn't work. And they're like, it's this group. And, I'm, and I always go, ah, it sounds awesome. You should do that. Because I think it's funny <laughs> when it happens. Yeah, and then you go, how'd it go? Yeah. And oh, then, it didn't work? How and come? Then if we end up being friends, I always eventually fess up and go, yeah, I knew that was going to be terrible. I just want to watch that happen. <laughs> and if they're the right kind of comic, then they adore me. And if not, that's okay. Because if they like that kind of nonsense... <laughs> Yeah, then you're a fucking dispenser for it. Yeah, then we're fast friends and you get to deal with my horseshit. Yeah, forever. <laughs> <laughs> a friend of mine who's a comic, he said he knew he thought I was one of the guys he liked the most when, for no good reason, we were driving to a show and I was talking about something and I just started crying. And he goes, and you just started crying in front of a guy you barely knew. And I was like, this is I, I relate to this guy <laughs> <laughs> and they we know what's going to work for somebody yeah because yeah, <laughs> I, I felt like a complete tool because you know so i don't know about you but sometimes crying will sneak up on me because oh, i don't yeah. mean to and i'm like ah it's not what i was going for <laughs> that's a lot of pressure to put on somebody too yeah yes first he, yeah he handled it nicely yeah yeah he's a, he's a good soul and he's done his own fair share of crying in front of me for no good reason so it's fine <laughs> Perf. all right so uh make the same mistakes i made why don't you take it from there she's a real nice girl okay that's who is <laughs> why does he know so much about this she's yep. a real nice girl and she's always there for you but a nice girl wouldn't tell you what you should do not sure about that lyric right there. What do we sure mean by a nice girl? Yeah. The, well, she wouldn't tell you what you should do. So a nice girl shuts her mouth. <laughs> she shuts her mouth. Shut up and dance. Yeah. Um, that yeah. does feel... Sue, Sue didn't have a good reaction to that line when we were watching the video. Yeah. Because I'm like, it, that just feel. I'm pretty sure that's just sexist, right? Yeah, I think that's straight up sex. Maybe it's meant to uh, be an accurate 50s moment. <laughs> yeah. To, it, but no, it's kind of eternal. Yeah. It's not like the 80s were <laughs> much better than the 50s in terms of sexism. Yeah. The be yeah. Yeah. Or now. <laughs> or now. Or the future. You know, just, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I guess at best you could say if he intended it to say girls are taught not you could be but but that's there that's nowhere in the lyrics that's just giving him the benefit of the doubt I think it's yeah. just, you're you're giving him the benefit of putting nice girl in quotes yeah which obviously the lyric sheet doesn't do and the, but and it's yeah. not implied by any of the other lyrics either so there's no moment when you're like okay no well, I see <laughs> yeah no this is not a secret progressive song <laughs> <laughs> all right uh keep going all right. listen boy <laughs> again <laughs> not a cool way to address someone yeah i'm How sure that, this kid yeah i don't know i'm guessing like high school age yeah, 16, 17, hopefully. Hopefully he's not talking to some dumb 12-year-old going, hey, you gotta, <laughs> you gotta make this relationship work. <laughs> it's like, all right, I just want to skate backwards. <laughs> uh, listen, boy, I'm sure that you think you got it all under control. You don't want somebody telling you the way to stay in someone's soul. Now you think you're projecting now. Yeah. He's the one who never wants anybody telling him anything. We know that from other songs. Yeah. From that all the other songs, from every other song. So maybe that's the one bit of advice. That's the mistake he made is not letting somebody else contribute to his process of emotional growth. That's okay. true. Even if he's not seeing it as the singer, that's the truth. <laughs> that's the real advice. Yes. yes. Oh, I like listen, that. Boy, you could listen to someone once. <laughs> <laughs> I 
<laughs> yeah, that is uh, unintentionally, I'm going to say unintentionally kind of ironic and sad. Uh, you don't want, oh, wow, yeah. You don't want somebody telling you the way to stay in someone's soul. I know I don't. Anyway, here's my advice. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, what you want is to get divorced and lose a bunch of money and then have to earn it back again. That's what you want. All right. Uh, you in the studio. <laughs> you're a big boy now and you'll never let her go, but that's just the kind of thing she ought to know. Yeah, that's good. Sure. Advice. Fair enough. Yes, yeah. if you're never going to let her go, you should tell her that. Yeah, you should tell her that and make sure you're dating and you're not a stalker. You should make sure of that. Yeah. By the way, this you just he just succeeded with this and now he's foisting it on this 16 year old. Yeah, like, look, I told Christy Brinkley I was never gonna let her go, and uh, it worked. So you should do that. This, my what happened to me applies to all situations now. <laughs> and me and Christy Brinkley have been together for nearly a year. Clearly, right? this is gonna stick. He is. I'm reminded of a friend of mine, I won't say who, who uh, went to massage school, learned how to be a, a massage person, a masseur, masseuse. Sure. And then like immediately upon graduation, uh, decided he was going to make a series of educational videos about massage. <laughs> and I'm like, you've just got here. Someone just finished teaching you. <laughs> now you're gonna tell everyone else <laughs> How to do it oh that's tremendous uh well it, you I, know it's god bless the enthusiasm but i'm like yeah i I, tr I try to always think before i give anyone advice or try to teach them anything i'm like hey do you want to know how to do that yeah or or stop me if you don't want this advice <laughs> but yeah. here's what i've known i don't know well i will also not say the name but we we know somebody who's recently posted how they're going to be a life coach. And uh, <laughs> we, both, well, we all know that person. Yeah. And uh, boy, that's not something they ever learned. So. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I mean, that's fraught with other complications from the very beginning because the life coach in itself is a, yeah. Not a thing. Yeah. Therapist is. Therapist is. So just go to the person yeah. who became a doctor. Business consultant. That's a thing. Yeah. Accountant. Yeah. These are all jobs. <laughs> yeah. Uh, gun runner. <laughs> all of those are valid, but life coach is just weird. Like, yeah. Uh, that's a, that's, yeah, that's, I mean, and that's what the song is like here's a bunch of advice you didn't ask for it worked <laughs> for me as far as you know yeah it's worked for me for as far as, and i'm convinced it's just gonna keep on working uh, <laughs> tell her about it tell her everything you feel give her every reason to accept that you're for real Solid. Not, uh, don't tell her everything you feel oh uh, yeah true <laughs> <laughs> no tell her every relevant thing you feel yeah and not even all of that yeah yeah um uh, keep a little mystery is that a good song keep a little mystery <laughs> <laughs> I, that, that would be a good song that would not be a billy joel song that would be a good song though yeah no it does not seem like the type to hold anything back that would be maybe uh he's a uh, single again right yeah. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Single in 72. That's a good, that's a good look. So it's either he's done, which will be great. Or the next thing you're like, ah, he's got a 20 year old girlfriend. Well, okay. Oh yeah. Now who's stupid? Yeah. It's me again, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it keeps happening. Where he's like, well, I can go broke one more time and I don't need that much more money to get to the finish line. So. Right living off the interest because is that, that a good song yes that's a <laughs> tremendous song uh, living off the interest uh is that an in excess song who who does that who living off the interest i don't know 
That feels like maybe like Gary Newman or something. <laughs> Gary Newman, yeah, I was gonna say uh, FTC. David Byrne. David Byrne. There you go. That is a Talking Heads song for sure. Yeah, Linwell on the interest. That's great. Um, so that'll be uh, our, our our sister show where we talk about songs that aren't currently Talking Heads songs, but could be. Yeah, yes. that one's three hours long. Yeah, that one we go. So here's what I think the lyrics would be. <laughs> Good. Here's what I think the dance would look like. Yeah. <laughs> They're all kind of similar. Yeah, this one has a lot of conga drum for some reason. Right. And he's not wearing shoes. <laughs> Artist. Artists don't wear shoes. That's the uh, uh, um, Hold on. Where are we? So, Listen, boy. So you were actually at... Uh, no, you were no, at all dreams. your crazy dreams. Let her know you need her. Let her know how much she means. That's reasonable. Yep, that's good. But so, also, stop bothering this kid. Yeah. and But maybe don't... This early on, maybe don't tell her all your crazy dreams. Yeah, you'll freak her out. Maybe the big ones, like I want to be an engineer. Maybe that one. <laughs> right. Yeah. Not, not. Someday I like to try butt stuff. Maybe you don't say that right away. <laughs> Does that fall under dreams? It's been one of my dreams. Uh, someday, bud. <laughs> <laughs> For now, just the podcast. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> oh, hey. hey <laughs> Uh, <laughs> you take it all right give her every reason to accept that you're for uh know how much you listen boy it's not automatically a certain guarantee that line makes me angry to ensure yourself you've got to provide communication constantly all right let's start with the first one that made you angry yeah um grammatical issues it's not automatically a certain guarantee that's redundant twice over yeah, that's true. That's true. If it's a guarantee, then it is automatic. Certain means guarantee. Yeah. If it's automatically a certain guarantee, it sings great. It sounds great when he's singing it. And then you think for a split second, you're like, oh, God, it's a train wreck. Right. Yeah, that's true. It is a, that, that's a hot. Listen, boy, it's not. Uh, guarantee. That wouldn't work. You need words in there. Yeah. Listen, boy, it's not going to be a for sure guarantee. <laughs> and even then. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the next lyric is pretty great. To ensure yourself, you've got to provide communication constantly in the song because it's being sound jumpy and fun, sounds positive. Yes. But when you isolate this lyric, listen, she's going to be... It's yapping. Machiavelli. Yeah. And she's going to just be yapping and yapping and yapping. You got to talk all the damn time. And not to please her or to become closer to her, but to ensure yourself. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, if you want to get gain her trust in the following manner... Yeah. And you get her pin codes. Right. The lyric after this should just be a thing where you should insult her a little bit. Like it should just be a thing about <laughs> nagging where you're like, you just tell her she's not too fat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I that I guess nagging wasn't in yet. Yeah. Or hadn't been identified. Hadn't been codified. I think it was always there, right? Yeah, I suppose it was always it was the pigtails in the inkwell, right? Yeah, it wasn't. It wasn't scientifically. <laughs> <laughs> there was no book or TV show about it. Yeah, by a guy named what was mystery. Yeah, a guy named mystery. And the mystery is how did garbage learn to talk? It's the <laughs> my oh, favorite man. thing is that. Um, if you meet a guy and his name is mystery, there is no mystery. <laughs> I've met a crazy person. Yeah. End of mystery. You're going to meet, you met somebody who's exhausting. You know, like if you meet a girl who's an empath, you're going to be tired. A lot. <laughs> you're going to be tired. Yeah. Uh, and it's, 
you're going to have to, and you're going to have to decide if it's worth going. Yeah. Yeah. Wick is great that you're going to have to decide. <laughs> and for a so while you have to work at the coffee place for how long? <laughs> and guaranteed you're going to decide that for a while it's worth it. You're just going right. to, but eventually you're going to go, well, I wish this was more worth it, but it isn't. <laughs> Yeah. Plus, uh, I miss, you missed rent, but you have a new tattoo. <laughs> hmm. The next lyric uh, is a bummer. When you love someone, you're always insecure, and there's only one good way to reassure. Boy, well, you're not always insecure. No, I wouldn't think. I mean, initially, I guess. Yeah. But yeah, that's a rough way to live. Yeah. And that makes me think that even then he was like, ah, this thing with Christy Brings ain't going to work out. <laughs> <laughs> How could this when you love out? someone and you're a foot shorter than her. <laughs> yeah. You're always insecure. <laughs> you're always insecure and wearing lifts. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's... It's valid. It's valid that a lot of people are insecure. And, and maybe if you are legitimately talking to someone younger who's just getting their feet wet, who are like, I don't know if I, I feel, maybe that's good advice in a particular context, right? Like, I get it. You're, you're scared. You're insecure. Hey, we're all insecure. Push through it. That could be good advice. It could be. Yeah, it's a phrase badly is all. Yeah. You're sometimes insecure. Maybe that would be worse. <laughs> You're occasionally insecure. Yeah, depending but, on the circumstances. Yeah, but in some circumstances, you might mean, you know, you agree on a lot, right? Ultimately depends on your parenting, but sometimes <laughs> you're insecure. <laughs> See, it's a longer song, but it gets better advice to this. To this and wouldn't you give up another three minutes of song time just to be accurate? Yeah, just to get this kid, this boy, this, this boy, boy who you're pestering. Yeah. <laughs> um, where are we? So tell her about it again. Let her know how much you care. When she can't be with you, tell her you wish you were there. This is obviously a personal experience from being on the road a lot. Yeah, and having read postcards. <laughs> <laughs> wish you, I wish I was there. Yeah. That's, that's a weird postcard to get from Hawaii. Oh, yeah, true. I wish I was there. I, wish I was there back in uh, uh, Ohio. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I'm here in Hawaii. Uh, tell her about it. Every day before you leave, pay her some attention. Give her something to, to believe. Yeah, that does feel a little conny, doesn't it? Like it's a, little, a little, little condescending. Yeah. A little like caper dangling. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it still doesn't feel like, you know, it's funny. It's It doesn't feel like he's asking you to do what he asked for in his other song. He's not asking for honesty. He's not. Oh, no. <laughs> it's like, here's what you, you give her this, you give her some of that. Tell her this. This is the kind of stuff they like to hear. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You want to keep her coming back? Yeah. Tell her about it. Yeah. Say some crap about how you like your mom, even if you don't. Yeah. <laughs> Just say, oh, love you always love your mom. You know, they, they always fucking love. love. They eat that shit up. Oh, they eat that garbage up. You know, tip the maid a D and make, make a big deal about it, you know. <laughs> <laughs> But act like you're not making a big deal about it. That's what you want. That's the hard part. Yeah. Yeah, you're playing it really cool, but make sure everybody sees it. Oh, so this woman is not present anywhere in this song. Oh, that's true, too. Yeah. She is... Uh, Got no advice for her. <laughs> yeah. She's, a, she's, a, a, she's absolutely an objectified... She's uh, the target. Yeah. <laughs> she's the mark. Yeah, it, there's, there's a very good chance that this kid uh, isn't even really dating her. And then he's just giving this guy advice and it's like, uh, he doesn't realize that, no, this is an unhealthy thing. She has a boyfriend 
and this kid is just outside her window. <laughs> I mean, yeah, and it's like, here's how you get her away from that guy. <sighs> also, all the advice is tell her stuff. Yeah. And there's no ask her questions. I happen to know <laughs> from my lovely roommate that women want to be asked questions. <laughs> They, want they to don't be, want to just be told stuff. They like to participate in a conversation, I hear. Yeah, sometimes even initiate one. What? <laughs> I know. Um, but it is very one directional <laughs> communication. He's, he, I mean, he said, you've got to provide communication constantly. Constantly, that just sounds like such a complaint too. Don't let her talk. Oh, just once she starts talking, you're fucked. <laughs> you keep talking You'll until never she get gets tired sleep. and falls asleep. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, yeah. Uh, because now and then she'll get to worrying. Just this because... is where musically, sorry to interrupt you, is where it turns back into a Billy Joel song for a minute. <laughs> yep, it's real quiet and mopey. And it's not, it doesn't sound like the rest of the song. I know it's a bridge. Yeah. It still doesn't sound like the rest of it. And uh, now he's like, he's panicking on this kid's behalf. Yes. The kid is still like, I didn't ask for this advice. It's like, here's why you got to keep talking to her constantly. Because now and then she'll get to worrying just because you haven't spoken for so long. And though you may not have done anything, will that be a consolation when she's gone? Keep talking. Yeah, just <laughs> never, never stop talking. Just I also might really love the, uh, you may not have done anything. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't know. She doesn't have any proof that you did anything. Yeah, just tell her she's crazy, you know? Just, yeah. uh, you know? Change, change how bright the lights are. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love because now and then she'll get, because you haven't spoken. I I think at this rate she'll be so happy if you haven't spoken for a little while. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You're like oh good maybe he's getting tired. Maybe we can actually eat. We've just been sitting here talking constantly. Uh, and then he immediately gets desperate after that, I feel like. Now we're back in the song. Listen, yeah. boy, it's good information from a man who's made mistakes. Yeah. And, uh, well, and hey, guy who's singing, we believe you. Yeah. We're sure you've made mistakes. <laughs> yes. You're making one now. Yeah. I, I first, I didn't ask you, old man. <laughs> Right. In fact, I'm late for my date because you you I'm actually supposed to be with her right now. Come on. <laughs> She's talking to another guy. Yeah, he's telling her stuff she might want to know. Listen. This is very much like uh, the kid is walking away now. <laughs> like, listen, boy, it's good information from a man who's made mistakes. Just a word or two that she gets from you could be the difference that it makes. But again, a grammatical nightmare. <laughs> it could be the difference that it makes. That is that's Billy Joel in a nutshell, man. Those those flippy floppity phrases. Yeah. I feel like this one is like some of them are at least like poetic license. This one feels a little ESL. <laughs> <laughs> it could be the difference that it makes. She's a trusting oh. soul. She put her trust in you. But again, a girl like that won't tell you what you should do. But you know who will. A oh, 40 year old man yeah. who's at a school dance for some reason. Yeah. And by implication, by the way, if she does tell you what she needs, she ain't a good girl. Right? Right. That's what we're, it's what we, I didn't even <laughs> know if we're implying it. I think we're just saying the other side of the coin. Yeah. What? She told you what she needs? What a whore. <laughs> <laughs> she won't tell you what you should do. It might be consent coming into play. <laughs> I know it's the 50s, but <coughs> it's the 80s. Yeah. 
tell her about it tell her everything you feel when we're back to that yeah it is very repetitive tell her all your crazy dreams let her know you need her let her know how much she means see that's that's fine advice. that's fine that is fine advice it's just sandwiched around a lot of for sure whatever you do boy don't give her a word edgewise ba, 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 da, ba. and uh <laughs> And a lot of just, and it, and I'd never thought of it this way. It's funny just talking it through just how it does feel like you're conning her, not trying to get to know her. Yeah. And it, it does, it, her absence in this song is very weird. And it almost feels like it'd be a better song if it was a duet. And then there was like a lady singer who was giving advice to the girl. Then you'd have a cute little song. Oh yeah, yeah, you're Both right. Musical theater. Yeah, but if the lady singer is giving the girl kind of the opposite advice. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's a bit. It's a good bit. Yeah. Um, city sketch. Come to think of it. Yeah, actually, and by the way, there were plenty of '50s like Paul and Paula and songs like that from the '50s that would follow that, or yeah, even like uh, Johnny Cash and uh, June Carter Cash had some songs like you know oh yeah jackson jackson is a great song and how about if it was just johnny talking about going to jackson that's a terrible song. <laughs> it's a terrible short song about a road trip i'm going with jackson okay all right who right. are you telling we wouldn't even know who he was talking to yeah and the part where he starts bragging about all the ladies he's gonna meet you're like Oh, this just seems sad. Whereas when you're playing it against June, he's clearly trying to get under somebody's skin and you can understand what the hell's going on. But yeah, that's true. If the lady was anywhere in the song. It would be nice. Yeah. Even if she wasn't singing, but just at least, I, I, well, I don't know. I don't want to hear Billy Joel do a falsetto. So it be <laughs> no, uh, but just give some credence to what she might be thinking or what yeah. she might want. Yeah, that, tell that's... her about it. If she says no, leave her alone. Well, yeah. <laughs> uh, but you know, yeah, tell her about it once. Tell her once. Yeah. I was looking at the last. Let her tell you about it, right? Right. Not you. Don't have to tell her every time. Let her go first. That's a good Ooh. song title. <laughs> I'm yeah. looking at the very end of it here where it's very repetitive now and looking at a lyric sheet with all this, tell her about it. Tell her how you feel right now. Tell her about it. Girl, don't want to wait too long. You got to tell her about it. Tell her now and you won't go wrong. You got to, it, I was thinking of like, uh, it's like the piece of paper you would find in the typewriter at a murder scene. <laughs> <laughs> like, I think, hey chief, you don't want to look at this. I think I know who did it. I think I, think I know who did it. Okay, uh, yeah. Back, back that. Back yeah. that up. And this is the crazy serial killer who always cuts off the ears. <laughs> <laughs> Tell her about it. Tell her. Yeah, I'm, I'm talking into the ear. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that son of a gun. It's funny, too. He's certainly not the only songwriter who sometimes divorced of the music it becomes a whole different thing but this is it's very much when you listen to it with the great production because it's a great greatly produced song yes the musically and i think his voice is on point in the song from the very beginning like you said this is a song that four years after he recorded it no more live performances probably yeah or if you did the live performances you don't do that first part and people are like why doesn't he do the first part it's like well because whiskey and smoking doesn't allow you to do the first part <laughs> right he now uh yeah if you see him in recent times he has a lady in his band who does like the high parts of certain songs clever i like it's that smart and it's a, an employment program <laughs> uh, for somebody um 
even the song in Innocent Man has some super high notes that he absolutely cannot do. Yeah. And I don't think could do at the time, even. Yeah, um, that was probably a lot of hot tea and whatever when you recorded it the one day Yeah, to nail it, and then you're not doing the song again. That, that was, I would bet, the worst tour for him. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, lots of uh, steam. Yeah, Lord. Lord, and yeah, lots of permanent damage from that tour, I'm sure. Yeah. Uh, nodes up the yang. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yeah, yang, um, yang nodes. Those are the worst ones. <laughs> yeah, those are, those are, yeah. You're not wrong. I I still like the song. I do still like the song. It's such a it's funny, like um oh uh Mac the Knife. Who did Mac the Knife? It was um why am I blanking? Mm, uh, I don't know. Paul Goble. <laughs> oh god. Um, <laughs> I've heard do it the most. Yeah, that's true. But who did uh and he did Beyond the Sea? Oh uh Bobby Darren. Bobby Darren. Bobby Darren. So Bobby Darren, if you have listened to a lot of Bobby Darren songs, um, half of them are sexist. Like a good 50%, you're like, ah, wow. But they're such good tunes. Yeah. And that's what I, I kind of feel like that about this. It's like, first, he, maybe you are expressing a 50s idea anyway. If you can certainly give him the benefit of the doubt that I'm like, well, this is kind of boy girl relationships as seen through the prism of the 50s and the 80s or whatever. But even that aside, man, it's a jumpy, fun little tune. Yes, absolutely. It's one of the very upbeat, which is kind of out of uh, place for him at the time. Yeah. This is coming after like Allentown and Pressure. Yeah, and yeah. A lot of bummers. Uh, yeah and it was it was clear like you put on that album and you're like oh he is getting laid by a supermodel i think yeah yeah absolutely <laughs> a lot happier yeah and uh is there any piano in this song i don't know if there is i'm sure it's like layered in somewhere but yeah. not in the forefront yeah it's definitely not the star of the song and that's kind of i, I don't mind it it's interesting to see him out in front of the piano in the video, he, um, you know, right. he's a crooner holding on to the mi old timey microphone. It's actually a really <laughs> well directed video. He's got that jacket on, that part's really cool. And uh, Rodney Dangerfield at the end of the video, fantastic. Uh, the video is great. But, um, but I, now that I think about his performance in the video, I think you're right. I don't think he liked doing videos. Yeah. I get that. There's definitely a lot of cutting away from him. <laughs> right. To show you stuff. And then it has the classic video thing where it shows a guy telling a girl about it, which is kind of <laughs> right. Yes. Yeah, so you have to act out the song title He's at some point. Talking things to her and she's listening very intently. And uh, she's, she's accepting that he's for real. <laughs> They're definitely going through that <laughs> the motions of that. Yeah, she's definitely not saying anything. Yeah, no, he's saying the things, that's for sure. He thinks and stuff. <laughs> and then they all dance. Yeah, they all dance. And all the other 50 style dancers in their Letterman jackets. And the teenage girls in the audience go wild as if they were watching the Beatles, which is what <laughs> he wanted. Is for sure what Billy Joel wanted was to for be sure. Yeah, let's make sure we have an audience. They're going <laughs> crazy for me, right? Just for me. Uh, <laughs> quick question before you: uh, yeah. so What do you think my background is? I mean, oh, you know boy. what it is. I want. I want to ask you a question: Is I, am I to generally see space, or is this a specific nebula? Um, it is a specific. Did I <laughs> yeah you're on the you're on the it is a representation from the hubble telescope of uh, a cosmic day do you know how long a cosmic day is i don't it's 40 million years okay and it's when cosmologists talk about time because you're talking about 
in, in right. a cosmic sense, you're talking about so much time that if you were to imagine that the beginning of the universe towards the end, of, towards now was one year, like the oh yes, okay, the universe has been around for one year. Uh, a cosmic day is forty million years. Gotcha. Yeah. So what day? Yeah. I'm looking at. Or just. Uh, I don't know. Is it May 9th? It's Billy Joel's birthday. Oh, that's that's a good guess. Um, it's <laughs> it's more it's more the amount of of years that a cosmic day is. How long that lasts. It's again. Remember, it's it's me. So it's going to be a dumb joke. Uh huh. No, no. I, <laughs> I got you. I'm with you on that front. Uh, the cosmic day is forty thousand years. Forty, 40 million. million. Forty million. Yeah. Oh boy. I long, it, I'll tell you one thing. It lasts for the longest time. <laughs> <laughs> Damn it. Uh. I was gonna put. <laughs> I was going to put in a mathematical equation for Planck time behind me for the same basic joke. Uh -huh. no, this is, I like this better. Oh, it's the longest time. You know, he, he sang all the parts on that. I did know that. And uh, I remember, at, I think that's cool. And I, and I thought, I think that's a cool thing to have done. And I often thought, even though I'm, it's cool, I'm glad he did it. He would have achieved the effect he wanted better if he hadn't. <laughs> yes, yeah, probably true. Because, and not even a criticism of his voice, but blending your voice with your own voice gives you one sound, whereas mm -hmm. blending your voice with a variety of other vocalists. Again, so Bette Midler did um, Boogie Woogie Bugle Boy, and she did it in the style of the Andrews Sisters. Oh, right, I remember it. But if I'm... I sounds to me like she blends with herself and it doesn't sound as rich or as, or it doesn't sound as impressive because the original right. Boogie Woogie Bugle Boy is just as dated as it is. You're like, damn it. These ladies, these ladies are just going in this particular rhythm that seems very hard to do. And you lose some of that sort of precision. Yes. And, Likewise with uh, the Four Seasons, I'm like, uh, it's cool that you did it yourself, but a doo-wop group was not yourself. <laughs> yeah, it's a you did a different thing. Yeah. You did a different thing. You did a studio trick. Yeah, you did a studio trick, exactly. And uh, which is cool, but it's, it's not that. This is how much I like Billy Joel. In high school, we had a talent show and a friend of mine and I decided to sing for the longest time and we would learn the parts wow. and it was for a gong show. So we practiced and practiced and it was a week before the gong show and everybody, we did a run through where we all got up and sang and we got up and sang for the longest time. And the teacher running it said, that was great. You guys, you don't mind being gonged, right? <laughs> <laughs> And so we changed our act because we immediately realized, oh, I think we're terrible. Oh, no, we don't want to be gone. <laughs> it was so... There were two of you trying to sing yeah. five parts? <laughs> yeah, yeah. It was ill-conceived in every single possible way. It was... And you know what? You're a man who's made mistakes. Yeah. Just so you're now you're qualified to give advice to teenagers. And this is good advice. Uh, hey, have you ever been a good singer before? Oh no, well don't don't just try. Don't yeah, yeah, no, work up to it. It was so bad because neither one of us were in choir, so we were just two idiots who <laughs> were just going, "Hey, we should do this." So we hadn't had any vocal lessons at all. If I think I had tried out for choir and they said no, so oh, that's a sign. You know. In high school, they're very nice about, even if you're just kind of bad, they'll let you inquire. They told me no. Yeah. So then that, I was that, like- That's wood shop. Yeah. That's I, all that's left after that. 
I should definitely do the doo wop song that's super complicated. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah, uh, that teacher, I'm still very grateful for that teacher. That's, in, you know, sometimes <laughs> when they shut you down, that's when education really happens. Yeah, I wasn't even mad or upset. I was I was grateful because then we made up some dumb comedy thing and got some laughs and we right. still got gong, but it seemed more like intentional and not sad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, there's nothing. I mean, getting shut down when you're singing is a hundred times worse because you're <laughs> it's such a vulnerable thing to do. Yeah. You're like, I'm going to carry a tune and everybody's like, fuck you while you're singing. <laughs> Awful. Bad enough when you're doing jokes, but at least you're like, all right. I didn't yeah. put myself all the way out there. Yeah, I'm just, yeah, making funnies and now, and I can make fun of the people yelling at me, so I've got an out. But yeah, it's, it's built into the, the art form. Yeah, whereas singing, you can't go, I'm going to improvise a lyric where I tell you to go fuck yourself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it really jams up the works. <laughs> uh. Do you have any trivia for us? Um, I do sort of. Um, you who played the harmonica on this album because it was not Billy Joel. Oh, really? Okay. And I have a follow up. Stevie Wonder. No, it is oh. a dude named named Toots Thielmans. Oh. Who I think is German Belgian. Uh, and do you know the first band he played with? Because it's almost relevant. Wow. Frankie Valley in the Four Seasons? <laughs> that would be nice. But no, Benny Goodman. Oh. He played in the Benny Goodman Orchestra. He played the harmonica and drums and some other things. So he played for um, a so big he band. Was an older fellow. Oh. He, I think, was like a studio musician, played a lot of things, started with Benny Goodman. I would bet was involved in a lot of those 50s albums. I'm sure. And, uh, was invited into this album for uh, maybe a layer of authenticity. Wow. Yeah. That's dope. It's pretty dope. Um, yeah, have some fun on Wikipedia with that guy. It's, uh, it's one of those guys, you know, when I started working in TV, I started to learn how many people have long, fruitful careers uh, that you never hear of you don't know their names and you don't you know and they just are there doing the work and are very happy with themselves they're doing fine um it's like oh yeah you can have a full career in show business and not be famous or even known yeah uh, and that's so great <laughs> such good news right you know my uh my wife did personal assistant work for gary smith do you know who gary smith is i don't well Understandable. He ain't famous, but he produced a Sinatra special. He produced a Barbra Streisand special. He produced um, multiple specials of uh, the Academy Awards and uh, some Tonys and the Star Wars Christmas special. Oh, boy. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Famously bad. That is not a thing you want to talk about. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. And it, it is legendarily bad and it is have you ever seen it by the way i saw it a long time ago it's one of those things that i think a lot of comedy writers want to talk about and i'm just like i don't know yeah. <laughs> it's as bad as you you think it, it was yeah i mean they're all pretty bad now yeah. um, but that's that's got to be fantastically bad <laughs> so this if whole album yeah the whole album i like the whole album and is an innocent man i think it's a fun little album i like some songs less than others as I was saying, the reason I picked it is because my buddy, that was his end to Billy Joel. Right. And I realized that as far as an album I would ever listen to, this is the album I would listen to the least. Probably because I was in high school in the 80s and I just don't want to hear it. Right. Because that's not an area. I was in high school in the 80s as well. And what I wanted to do is listen to actual 50s music. 50s and 60s like remember those like KTEL collections you would get yep they're like 17 great hits of the 50s and then it was like not quite the great hits because right. for like financial reasons that you didn't understand 
So you would walk up to, you know, you go to your parents and go, you remember this song from when you were young? And they'd be like, mm, no, <laughs> no, I don't know what that is. Yeah. Uh, you would get a little mystified. But yeah, I loved this album later. Yeah. I think, uh, I say, you know, and of course you're inundated with the videos at that time. So you're like, I don't need to sit down and listen to the album as well because yeah. I've seen color about it six times today. Yeah, I came back around to the album. I, I remember enjoying it at the time just because it was a current thing, but getting real sick of it. Whereas, um, like I said, I can listen to scenes from an Italian restaurant all day long. It's, I yeah. like that song a lot. And this, yeah, this that's, um, that's the song if someone says, what is Billy Joel like? You know, like, oh, that song. <laughs> Or like, why did you think he was Italian? I'd be like, oh, that song, that's why. Right. <laughs> uh, but you know, who wants a song about a Jewish restaurant? Yes. Someone, uh, I'm sure. Yeah. Um, shall I tell you what song I would like to do next time? Yes, I would love to hear that. I will tell you why, first of all. Okay. As we know, he, Billy Joel loves to crib from music he enjoys. We just talked about the 50s. Um, he also will sometimes grab a band that he thinks is cool and be like, oh, I'm gonna try to write a song that sounds like them. So we're gonna do Running on Ice. Oh, okay. And You're who, familiar? No, I'm excited. Um, I kind of want you to just listen to it and immediately know who he's trying to sound like. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, let's do it that way. Do it that way. And then uh, email me right after you listen to it. Oh, that's Email me a bunch of ha ha ha's. Yeah, that's it. Really it is shocking. Running on ice. That's exciting. You, you know what's funny too about songs like that? Um, so uh, what's your, when you're not listening to your collected works, what's your, what's your delivery system for just music? Like I'm on Spotify. Oh, I um, usually listen mostly to my collected stuff. Okay. I had went through a jag where I made a bunch of playlists some time ago, like, oh, workout one and workout two and <laughs> stuff like that. Yeah. So I'll just like throw one of those on or I'll just yell at Alexa to play stuff. So one of the you things- You can just I go like, hey, Alexa, play folk music and that'll happen. Oh, that's cool. So like I listen to a lot of Spotify and a thing that I recently realized that I want to fix in my uh, curated listening of music is if you listen to music through Spotify, there are naturally songs that they exist on Spotify, but they're not going to come up on any damn list. So oh. if you're listening to Billy Joel, uh, which I, I'll just listen to sometimes on a car ride, I'll just put on uh billy joel radio and it just plays oh, yeah. nothing but but oh, i accidentally set off my alexa sorry alexa stop <laughs> fantastic <laughs> that's great oh, good job alexa yeah, uh, she did good. all right i should make sure mine doesn't pop off okay um <laughs> but there are songs that for some reason just will never play on their own and i realized oh ever since i started to listen to spotify uh unintentionally i'm narrowing the amount of things that i'm listening to so these are things that i'm starting to address particularly when i want to listen to new music because i don't want to seem like i've given up <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't work i know it doesn't, it doesn't work yeah it's all right. I, yeah i listen to uh wap just because I felt like I should. <laughs> and I, I don't have any problem with it. It's just the thing I thought was, well, I don't think this is for me. That's all. Yeah, that's all right. Yeah, not all things have to be for me, but I felt like I should listen to it. I, you know, in my line of work, I end up listening to a lot of stuff that is not aimed at me. Yeah. Uh, and I'm just like, oh, that's okay. Yeah. <laughs> no, great. Um, I have my stuff that I like and there's more than enough. Yeah. And are you ever pleasantly surprised where you're like, okay, here's a new thing I actually like, or do you more or less go? Yeah. Very occasionally. That's good. Um, and yeah. Um, like I really got into Kendrick Lamar. Yeah. Uh, very famous rapper. 
Yeah. It's, like, it's fucking fantastic. Uh, it's, you know, it, he's an artist and that's more universal and appealing than any like genre. True. Yeah. Um, yeah. If you can transcend your genre a little bit, then it'll stick to your, my brain maybe. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. Uh, I don't think WAP is that. <laughs> no, no, I don't think so. Yeah. I was never, I, upset. I was never upset with the song the way some people were. And I found that the way people were upset with it kind of funny and stupid. Cause I'm like, it's kind of great. Cause she's clearly, she wants you to be upset. What, what? It's so <laughs> That's much. the other thing. Yeah. You fell for it. Yeah. It's so, it's so on the nose that there's a part where it's on your nose. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, you didn't catch them. Yeah, it's very funny. And it's very funny that there have been 5,000 songs about hard penises and everyone seemed all right. Yeah. <laughs> One. Wait a minute, this is too much. Come on, yeah. <laughs> so well, yeah. Go. that was the point. We all <laughs> fell in her trap. Yeah. So big. And she made a bunch of money. Good for her. Good for her. God bless. Yep, absolutely. All right, friend, I'm going to stop this recording. Stop uh, it. Thank you, everybody, for listening, of course. And uh, for those of you who are going to be with your families for Thanksgiving, I'm sorry to hear that. Yep.